Today, I'm gonna to show you how to merge together an HDR photo in Lightroom. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And apparently we're making Lightroom fun too, because that's what today's episode is all about. Now, for those of you guys who've been living under a rock, um, you may not know this, but Adobe just released a huge update for Lightroom. And I'm really excited about the update because it actually adds some of the things, um, some functionality into Lightroom that I think has, should have been there for a long time. And that includes two of my favorite ways to make your photos more interesting. One of those is HDR or high dynamic range. And the second one is a panorama. So in today's episode, we're gonna show you how to create an HDR or a high dynamic range image without leaving Lightroom. Everything you need to do can now be done in Lightroom. Now, before we get into showing you guys actually how to create an HDR in Lightroom, it'd be really important if you knew what an HDR is. So if you already know this, you can skip ahead. But for those of you guys who want a little bit more brushing up, HDR stands for high dynamic range. Now let's go ahead and break that down. Dynamic range is basically a measure of how much information your camera can access from the darks all the way to the lights. So when you take a picture, you'll get information on the darks and on the lights. Now in the real world, there's information that's beyond what your camera can actually capture. You'll know if you ever took a picture looking you know, into the sky and maybe the sky was exposed, but the ground was really dark, or maybe you took a picture inside a room and the outside looked totally blown out. It's because a camera can only capture so much information between the darks and the lights. In reality, you have a lot more information. The darks go out to here and the lights go out to here. So you could see like information in a dark cave at the same time when you could see the bright outside but modern cameras are limited to a smaller dynamic range. They can't capture all of that. So what an HDR does is it allows you to take an image here that has a range here, an image that's darker and an image that's lighter, and then combine those images together so you get a final image that represents a higher dynamic range than one image could provide on its own. So it's really a way of working around a limitation of a modern camera to actually access and capture more dynamic range in a photo. So to take images that are ready for an HDR, just be sure that your camera is on a tripod. That's gonna make sure it's staying in the exact same place. So when you take three different pictures, underexposed, properly exposed, and overexposed, you'll be able to align those all together and combine the information very, very easily. So now we've covered all the bases. You know what an HDR is, you know how to capture them, and you know the basic idea of what we're trying to do. So now let's go ahead and jump into the new version of Lightroom and see how we can create an HDR in Lightroom. So here we are in Lightroom. Now keep in mind, this is the latest release of Lightroom. So you can see I'm on Adobe Lightroom CC 2015. If you haven't made your updates, be sure to click on your Adobe Creative Cloud and you can go down to your Lightroom and there'll be an update button as well. So keep in mind, you have to be in Lightroom CC 2015 in order to make this work. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is bring some files into Lightroom. And I've got a new catalog here and basically I'm just gonna go to my finder window and I'm just gonna drag a couple of these folders directly into Lightroom. It's my favorite way to import. Just click and drag right here into Lightroom. Now, I'm gonna leave them in their current location. So we're gonna hit add instead of copy. We're gonna hit add and we're gonna go ahead and go down to import. So we've imported our images into Lightroom. I wanna go ahead and take a look at our exposures just to be sure we have the proper images to wind up making an HDR. So let's go ahead and click on this. I've actually got four images here. We're gonna click here and I'm just gonna scroll from the left to the right. And what it's gonna do, you're gonna see that my image is gradually getting brighter and brighter. Now, these are not adjustments that I made here in Lightroom. These are actually photos that were taken. You can see these photos were taken with the different shutter speed, allowing more light in for each of these photos. So this photo you can see is great for capturing detail here in the very light areas, right? But here in this dark area, I can't see almost anything. So as I scroll to my images and I see my images are getting lighter, now I have a lot of information here, which is perfect. But over here in this part of the canyon, it's totally overexposed. So that's the limitation of the dynamic range. I can't get the super brights and the super darks in the same image. So now it's time to combine all those together so we can get one photo that represents the information from the light all the way to the dark. So to go ahead and merge your photos together, we're gonna go back to our grid view 
I'm gonna shift click on all the photos we want to turn into an HDR. Then we're gonna right click and go down to where it says photo merge and then over to HDR. Okay, so after waiting a second for the preview to go through, here we have our HDR merge preview window. Now, you can see I've auto-aligned this. Basically, it's gonna make sure if there was any movement in between each of the images, it's gonna put them in the same place. The next thing I wanna click on is auto-tone. And this is really going to allow me to bring the information in from the lights and the darks. And you see it works really well. We've got information here in the lighter part of the canyon as well as the darker part. Now, if this doesn't look perfect, it's, no, it's not a huge deal. You can actually continue to edit this after you've already made the HDR, which we're gonna do in a second. Now, if you do have anything that moved while you were taking these images, let's say you were taking a picture of the Eiffel Tower and there were tourists moving around and things like that. Well, when you combine those images together, sometimes you'll get what's called ghosting, where you'll see people from one exposure in multiple exposures. So you can change the de-ghost amount from low, medium, or high. Now, in this case, there's nothing moving in this image. It's just rocks. I mean, I guess they move over very long periods of time, but we didn't capture that on camera. So I'm gonna keep this on none and we're gonna go ahead and go down to merge. So the big advantage for merging HDR files together in Lightroom as opposed to Photoshop is that it actually creates a raw file. So now you're able to develop and edit that file with a huge amount of dynamic range. We're gonna get into that right now. So after processing, basically Lightroom just sticks out another photo. We have our original four here and then we've got this guy, which is a combination of them. So we're gonna double click here and you're gonna see immediately we have the file name and Lightroom automatically appends HDR onto the end. Now you'll notice it says DNG, which stands for digital negative, which is Adobe's version of a raw file. So now we can edit this with the full capability of a raw file and the expanded high dynamic range of using four images. That's a lot to say, but we'll, I'll just show you what it means and you'll, you'll think it's really cool. All right, so now we're in the develop module of Lightroom and I'm gonna edit this basically the same way I would edit a normal photo, except I have a ton more range. Now, some of the things that I find really cool, here in our exposure, normally with the photo, I'd be able to go plus and minus to five stops of exposure. Like if I went to this photo here and I went to my exposure all the way up, I'd be able to go to plus five and down to negative five. Now, here in my HDR photo, it actually expands that out. So I can go all the way up to a plus 10 and all the way down to a negative 10. So if you did happen to take many different photos and had a huge dynamic range, you could be able to adjust that with more stops of light. For now, we're just going to leave this yeah, right about there. Looking good. When you first create an HDR photo, it tends to look a little bit flat. And that's because the black point and the white point have not been set yet. So here in Lightroom, I'm gonna to go to my develop module and we're gonna scroll down right to where we see our whites and our blacks. Now to have these set automatically, it's very easy. Just hold the shift key and double click where you see the word black. There we go. And double click where you see the word white. And it's going to automatically set your black point and your white point. Now these are good starting places. You can always change them. I can make my white point a little bit brighter if I wanna do that. I can make my black point a little bit darker. But you can see this black point, my photo looks, it looks totally washed out and looks really fuzzy. So shift, double click right there, and it'll set the auto black point, figuring out the best representation of your image. So to finish this HDR off, I'm just gonna edit like I normally would in Lightroom. I'm gonna bring up our clarity a little bit. There we go. Clarity just tends to make everything more interesting. And I'm gonna bring up our vibrance a little bit so we really get that color coming in from Antelope Canyon. And that looks awesome. So let's go ahead and compare this to one of our other images in the same series. Looking at this now, it's pretty obvious. Here in the HDR on the left, we have all this information here in the light areas, as well as information in our dark. So we have a really high dynamic range. Now, here is our before photo. This is just one of the photos in the series. You can see not only are we overexposed here in the highlights, but we're underexposed in the shadows as well. So the camera truly was not able to capture the dynamic range of the scene. So we've taken multiple different photos that had underexposed, properly exposed, and overexposed. We combine them together, and now we have a high dynamic range image that's capable of expressing all the information that was actually there in, I guess, real life when you took your photo. And that's how to create a high dynamic range image in Lightroom. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you're shooting your images on a tripod. You wanna capture a scene taking images that are a little bit underexposed, properly exposed, and overexposed. So you can combine these together to get a higher dynamic range than any of the original images. Next, you're gonna to wanna to load your images into Lightroom. From there, you can shift click on all of your images, right click and go to photo merge, and then down to HDR. 
I suggest having auto align and auto tone checked. You can always make adjustments after the HDR has been created. When you're done merging all your photos, it's time to set the white point and the black point. To do so, just hold down the shift key and double click on the word whites and the word blacks, which will automatically set your white point and your black point. And then it's time to edit your images just as you normally would. You can do that in Lightroom or you can export this out into Photoshop and work in Photoshop. Just keep in mind that if you are planning on merging multiple photos together, go ahead and do that in Lightroom first and then work on the final output in Photoshop afterwards. All right, and that's it for today's episode. And good job to Adobe for finally adding this to Lightroom because I'm actually gonna legitimately use it now, which is great. If you like what we're doing here at Flurn and you would love to know more about Photoshop and photography and apparently Lightroom too, just hit that subscribe button on your screen right now. We'll send you free episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for a new episode or a question or a comment about today's episode, just leave it right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. I'll Flurn you later. Bye, everyone. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and we're here. I forgot what I say. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I forgot what I say. My, oh, you can find me on flurn.com. There we go. <laughs> Basically, Lightroom 4. What was it? 5? Lightroom 5? All right. So what does that mean? So what does that mean for... Okay. So what does all that mean for the... All right. So what does that... So what does that all... So what does that all mean to you? So when you're actually... So when you're actually... Okay, so when you're actually out shooting, so when you're actually out shooting for an image, all right, so the, blah, and that includes two of my favorite. Um, now we're gonna show you how to load everything into Lightroom and get these HDR photos looking great without losing Lightroom, without leaving Lightroom. So that, all right, so that's about, now if you normally stay in Lightroom, go ahead and stay in Photoshop. Okay, whew, champion. I am the Lightroom champion.